particular apartment. Uh, notice down here, apartments 405 and 406 have not been assigned parking spaces themselves. Now this data is completely configurable. I can uh, make changes to what I show and don't show. Uh, I can do all other changes such as uh, here's a sort ascending, sort descending button. I can use additional filtering in, in here. I can do additional summarization by using this icon. I can print this as is. I can download this under this icon to download it onto an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, or I can change the, the layout completely using this icon. I'm going to go ahead and double click on this and change the, the layout. And here you'll see uh, a column set of all the additional data uh, that's available to me versus what's actually being displayed in the layout set itself. So in this case, uh, should I decide uh, I really don't want to see building, it's not important to me, I'm going to go ahead and highlight the field and click on this arrow and that will move this over to the column set that's not being seen and then I save that. Once that's done, you'll see that building is now gone and it's sh showing uh, uh, the data layout set without that particular column. Now, within this layout set, I can drill down further directly into additional data about Apartment 101. So once I double click on this line, it actually shows me the data uh, available to me for uh, Apartment 101 itself. Okay, you will notice here for Apartment 101, we have a lot of data uh, that's hidden behind these individual folders. And a lot of clients have come up to me and said, hey, Paul, there's a lot of data that's stored in here, and that's great for providing a robust functionality. Uh, but what if I want to you know, have one layout that has all the relevant data uh, that I want for any particular rental unit or apartment? Well, uh, we have that. You, know, you, you simply click on a print preview master, and this will then show you uh, the rental space information and this is totally configurable by you and you can just uh, indicate uh, what data you want to show here and uh, leave off the data that you don't uh, that's not important uh, so for instance here it's showing the measurements here it's showing some frequency terms uh, scrolling down here I'm it's showing that uh, you know Frank Fisher has been assigned to the apartment itself so with this, uh, that way you're not going to get inundated uh, with all that data that's available to you here within all of these different uh, uh, folders. However, I did want to show you uh, a couple of folders. One is for attributes. If you recall the, uh, earlier in our PowerPoint, I had that hierarchical structure of site and then building and then uh, rental unit, and you can assign characteristics to those. Here are those characteristics or attributes. In this case, uh, you've got luxury carpets assigned. It's got a balcony assigned to it. And there are literally a whole library of characteristics available to you, plus you can develop or add your own characteristics. Here I'm going to show you the list. Um, so here's a whole you know, default ones. Obviously, the ones that you check are going to be assigned to uh, the rental unit itself. Also wanted to point out uh, the measurements are kept within this measurements folder. And here you'll see where the uh, size of 1,200 square feet is kept and stored. And then also uh, the assignment of two enclosed parking spaces. So that wraps it up for uh, facility setup. Uh, next we're going to talk about lease management. And uh, within lease management, we're going to start off here. Okay, we're going to start off with the lease agreement, uh, doing a search for a particular contract. In my case, I'm going to look for contract 186. I'm going to enter it into my real estate navigator search field here and click on it. And now this is the data for contract 186. Here's the header information uh, showing me the contract type as well as the company code and the contract number itself. Here's information about the rental space. Notice it's uh, apartment 103. That's under my... Um, 702 uh, site that I've created, and the Stony Brook site, and here's the master tenant, Mr. John Smith, with some of his information. Here's some contract start and end date, and here's my monthly rent uh, for this particular apartment. 
If I want to know more information about the tenant, John Smith, I uh, click on the Partners folder here, and uh, we'll see that not only uh, John Smith is the tenant, but there's also a secondary tenant for Mrs. John Smith. And uh, you'll also notice that uh, I can, uh, if John Smith leaves the apartment, um, we can easily change the master tenancy to his wife. Uh, if I want to find out what are the actual apartments that have been assigned to the Smiths, I click on Objects here, and you can see that it's just Apartment 103 that is covered for this particular contract. To be able to see how rents have been determined, click on Bill Codes here under this folder, and here are all the uh, rents that are laid out. Here's the basic rent here of 2500 Here's the secondary rent um, set up for 450 for Mrs. Smith. Uh, the facilities there are charged $150 a month for meals and $75 a month for uh, parking. Now, if I want to find out how did I calculate this at $2,500, well, in this case, it was entered as a fixed amount. But if I wanted to, I could actually use a formula to calculate this by simply highlighting this row and then clicking on the calculation button down here. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this row, uh, this row, and here's the calculation. Now, again, this was put in as a fixed amount, but I call, also could have used a formula, and uh, there are formulas available, various formulas available to you. The most common one is using the square footage uh, of the uh, rental unit times a particular dollar amount. So in this case, I think it was, uh, I think it was 1,200 square feet times whatever dollar is going to be charged per square feet, foot uh, of the facility. Now, clients have also come up to me and said, you know, how do I know when somebody has actually changed these contracts? Is there, and it, for that, you're able to do that using this change documents uh, icon right here. Go ahead and click on that, and you will see, and, uh, and, and double click on these two display radio buttons, and you'll see here, here's the change history uh, for setting up this contract. Um, down below, you'll see, you know, back on December 5th, this is when I actually created uh, the contract itself. And uh, later in the day, you'll notice I changed the basic rent, and I lowered it from 2500 to 2400 Now, those same clients have also come up to me and said, Paul, there's a lot of data that has to be input to a contract. Is there a way to uh, create a, you know, a lease agreement or a contract uh, in a very simple way without having to go through these particular fol folders and uh, train users, something that will re you know, really require very little training for users to get onto the system and immediately generate lease agreements? And the answer is yes. You do that through uh, going back to the real estate home here, creating a lease form. And what you see here is an Adobe form. This is what we talked about earlier. Okay, so here's an Adobe form for setting up a, a lease agreement. Uh, notice it's got these fields that need to be filled in, residence name, security, social security number, etc. Uh, some fields will already be uh, preset, such as the company code. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of this panel and expand this, and also drop down to show available uh, apartments and room numbers, so I'm going to go ahead and click on that. Uh, here's the expansion, and I'm going to say select on apartment 104 and fill in, fill in the, uh, the appropriate screens. Now, the thing to know ab about this as I scroll down is that our clients are able to uh, use their existing lease formats and put this into the Adobe form. It's very simple and straightforward. Uh, you will have to identify what are the required fields, such as in this case the effective dates, and uh, you know uh, one or two bedroom indicators and you know the particular rent involved in this case we're charging 100 bucks for laundry for monthly laundry but other uh, things you should know is that by the time you get to the very bottom of the form itself there's this create button uh, so you've correctly uh, input all the fields above uh, it will do some checks uh, to make sure that you put things in the right format once it's ready you simply click on the create button and boom, now the Adobe Forms has created a contract on the SAP system that, uh, that we were just uh, accessing. So in this case, contract 187 under this company code, 
I'm going to go ahead and go back to the Real Estate Navigator uh, where, we, where we were looking at contracts and uh, look up 187. And here it is. And here's all the data that was copied over from the Adobe form. And now this particular contract has been generated. This is especially good for users that may not have a lot of computer skills and will require very little training. Okay, well that wraps it up for uh, lease management itself. Now we're going to go ahead and cover cash receipts. Okay, for cash receipts, uh, notice before we had started in the contracts area previously, but now uh, up here we're going to click on the real estate accounting workbench. And again, uh, I have security authorization to do this. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And you'll see here's my accounting launch pad um, uh, with various options available to me. Uh, for us to be able to do cash receipts, I have to first post the contract itself. The system has to calculate, okay, what is the monthly rent that was due to me? Is, uh, do I now, have to calc I now have to calculate that as a system before I can actually receive payment uh, from the tenant? So in this case, we're going to go ahead and click on periodic posting contracts here. Uh, this actually will um, have the search criteria set up. I can run this for uh, any particular contract. I can run it for a building. I can run it for an entire company code. Uh, I can also do this as a batch job. So here we're doing it manually. Most companies set up a batch job, a periodic batch job, uh, and do, you know, for instance, an entire building or an entire site. In our case, uh, we're going to enter in the particular contract in question that we had particular uh, that we had that we're going to be posting. Uh, we put in the appropriate posting dates. I scroll down, and I'm going to actually run this in simulation mode. Uh, so at this point, I'm ready to actually execute. Go ahead and click on the execute button, and here's my simulated periodic postings. You'll see that there's my $2,500 rent. I have provided a year-end uh, incentive uh, for Mrs. Smith. Uh, that's because she has stayed with her contract all year in this case, and I've given her $100 off on her, on her December rent. Uh, but notice that everything is in green lights. There are no issues uh, with posting the contracts at this time. Uh, so now uh, that I've seen it run in simulation and there are no errors, I can back out by clicking on this green arrow and actually run this in update mode at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and execute this in update mode itself. Notice I get the same report showing that periodic postings is, has gone through for this particular contract. However, this time we've actually made uh, AR entries. So uh, now it's actually been posted. Accounts receivable is now able to an accepted a payment within the system itself. To show that, click on the documents here, and here's the actual debit and credit entries made in, on the system uh, in AR to be able to accept payment. And uh, notice it lists the GLs uh, uh, as far as the debit and clearing accounts for the uh, AR payment itself. Now, other clients have also come up to me and said, Paul, uh, what if my, my contract is not exactly right? What if there are issues with this? Will this actually allow a, uh, a posting to take place? And the answer is no. If there are errors on this, it will show up uh, you know, without the green light, and you will have uh, errors that show up in an error log. Here's an example of an error log in question. Uh, these particular steps went fine, but then boom, it ran into the problem of an in uh, inactive contract. This contract